Well, on stage here now at Motor Classica, a very special guest, and it's uh, Derek Bell. And Derek, uh, welcome to, to Motor Classica. First of all, you've had a little bit of time to have a look around. What do you think of it all? I think it's fantastic when you sort of consider um, that, you know, there aren't, there's only 20 odd million people in this country, and you see the quality of the cars that have been collected over the years and then brought from all parts of the country to be here and look so fantastic. I think it's miraculous. You've just come from uh, the Rensport reunion in, uh, in the United States, uh, a meeting that I've always wanted to go to. Tell us all about that for those people who don't, who don't know what it's all about. Tell us what, what happened there and what your involvement was. Well, those who speak German will know what Rensport means, but it's obviously German well for racing. And, uh, so uh, they, it was the fourth event they've ever had. They started off with them being every three years. So we started at Lime Rock, or they started at Lime Rock. <coughs> And it was Porsche really getting an opportunity as probably the, the greatest name in motorsport in reality, getting all their car owners, which of course are basically sports car owners, to come along, bring their cars, come and see some of the history, bring all the drivers that they could over. So we went to Lime Rock, Connecticut the first year. Three years later, we were at Daytona at the 24 hour on the oval track. And that was very impressive. And then three years later, we did it again at Daytona because it was such a roaring success. And then it was decided, come on, and we, time we put it on the west coast of America. So they poured it over to the Guna Seca, and that's where it was last week. So what was your involvement there? What were you driving? Well, um, I was there really because I won a few races with Porsche, and they brought in 57 drivers that had raced for them and been successful with them over the years. So that was really a fantastic reunion for all the drivers. And then we had all the cars, and I couldn't tell you how many cars were there. But basically, every car was represented that Porsche ever raced, apart from the 91730. <clears throat> which we have here upstairs in the, um, on the scale electric track. But the rest were all there from, from the 908s, the 9083s, the 910s, the 904s, right through to the last car, the LMP2 Porsche Spiders that they raced with under Roger Penske. And, we, <clears throat> and so they had all these cars there, plus all the guys brought their own cars along for the event, you know, private owners. They had lots of races and several dinners and get togethers, and it's become. Quite a commercial event, but not ridiculously commercial, but it's all Porsche. And, uh, you know, all the drivers were introduced. We had some very nice sort of intimate evening, well, one particular intimate evening with the drivers and wives. And Dr. Porsche was there from Stuttgart. He came in Wolfgang. And it was just a, a, a really lovely, relaxed event. <coughs> We've been talking a, a bit about historic racing. You've raced at a lot of these events like Goodwood and, uh, and, and those sorts of things. From your point of view around the world, what do you see as the, the state of historic racing? It seems to be growing incredibly at the moment. Well, you're right. I mean, I needn't say that, but I mean, it is the fastest growing sport, uh, motorsport event right now. The point is that motor racing itself, I think, is pricing itself out in nearly every area, so few and few people can afford to do it. Not that it's making them go historic, but historic is substantially cheaper. And of course, you've got a heck of a lot of guys that were there through the richer era, if that's the right word, <coughs> that have been able to buy these cars as collector's pieces and then take them out and race them. And I know there's a lot of cars here that have been to the Goodwoods and the Monterey's and Phillips Island and that sort of thing. And of course, the public love it. And what astounds me, uh, I noticed it particularly the last two years at Goodwood Revival, is the young people, you know, the, the 12s and 14 year olds that bother to go. Because I assumed they wouldn't be interested in the old cars. But in fact, I talked to them, I mean, made great effort to talk to the younger people. And they said, no, we just love seeing these cars, the wonderful cars we read about in books and our parents talk about. And of course, um, you know, that is where the future is, is the younger people following. We don't want them all, when we all die in the next 20 years, sort of having no historic people left. We must, uh, uh, must touch briefly on the, the circuit, I suppose, you're most famous at, and that is, is Le Mans. Um, what, is, what is the magic, for those who haven't been lucky enough to, to go to the track and experience that amazing event. For you, what is the magic of Le Mans? Um, I never thought of it as magic. It's bloody painful. Um, 24 hours is so physically wearing uh, for two drivers. It's even become as bad with three now. But I went there 26 years out of 27, and I was very lucky to be in some of the greatest teams. Sometimes I wasn't always, but had some wonderful times there. And, but Le Mans is just, you know, it's that wonderful big city. It's one of the biggest cities in France. Everybody thinks it's a village in the middle of the, of the forest, but it's a massive city, beautiful cathedral. And it's something that's so historic now because we have the, you know, the drivers, uh, sorry, so the car scrutineering in the Place de la République right underneath the cathedral. And really when you watch the Steve McQueen movie, which you should watch if you haven't, that really t tells you about Le Mans. It shows you Place de la République, the cathedral, 
and all the bits that go on about it. And then, of course, the racetrack, which is basically the road that takes you down to tour. And that phenomenal straight of six kilometers or four miles where we used to trunk down pretty quickly on. And just the whole atmosphere where the drivers stay in the chateaus. And it's just an atmosphere that's totally unique. I think that's the thing that surprised me was just how beautiful the, the city was, as you say, with the cathedral. And, you know, it really has become, a, as you say, a whole week-long event now with the, with the scrutineering at, at the Place de Republic and, 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 and everything about it. It's just remarkable, isn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, the, you cannot criticise it, really. Um, the French do know how to lay on an event. And because it's historic, because it's really owned almost by the city, uh, they can do what they like. And they've really improved it, the paddock area, the pits. Uh, the quality of everything is very high. It's not a cheap place to go to, but you have to realize they only really have one event a year. And so they have to make their money out of Le Mans. And they certainly do that. But it is fantastic as a driver to go there and remember the history. You know, it's been going 70 more, 70 odd years now. And you realize what went on there. But even more so is when you're one of the drivers that have won it, uh, to be part of that sort of very select group. Just quickly before we let you go, because I know you've got uh, lots, of, uh, lots of things to do upstairs and lots of things to sign for a lot of the people here today, but on a, on a, I suppose on a sad note, you, you, grew, you came through a, a time of racing, racing at the, at the, at the Nürburgring and at a time when it was a far, far more dangerous uh, business than it is now, and we had a, a recent reminder that the fact motor racing is, is still dangerous. What do you think that now a lot of people are saying, okay, Let's, we can't race open wheel cars at oval tracks anymore. It's just, that's just become too dangerous. What do you think of all that, the reaction to Dan Weldon's unfortunate death? Well, I just think we've been so lucky for so long, Sinet and Senna's uh, tragic death and Ratzenberger at the same weekend back in 94. And I think, you know, um, it, was, it, was, it was the way what, it happens in racing. Things break. I mean, we're driving that 9, 960, 962 at 235 miles an hour for 24 hours on the Mulsanne straight. If a wheel came off, a drive shaft broke, we would get killed too. But it's all very calculated. And generally speaking, we're calculated. I'm, as a driver, like Dan Weldon, we're not particularly brave people. We just are good at what we do. I'm not very good if you said, oh, let's climb up there and see if we can walk across there on a tightrope, I'd say, after you. You know, I wouldn't necessarily go and jump out of a tree when I had the chance to do a parachute jump. I wasn't that keen to go parachute jumping, but I did it. Um, and I think in Dan's position, I think the problem with the IndyCar is that they're perpetually at high speed, going around and around. Whether the banking was too high or too low, it doesn't matter. If it was lower, they'd be going even quicker. Um, the trouble is, I think there were too many people on a small bit of track that was far too fast, and it was just an amalgam of all those things together. And they had made the track faster, because I was there as they were l actually raising the angle of the wall one year to make it faster. And I don't think racing needs to be faster. And the problem is, as I say, once one of these cars hits the back of another one, it gets airborne, and there's nothing anybody with any safety can stop. You can raise the fences as high as you like, but if a car gets its nose in the air, it's going to go upwards, like a plane does. Well, Derek, thanks for joining us, and uh, welcome to our Center Motor Classic. I hope you have a fabulous weekend here, and for now, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank My name is Anne Evans, I'm a partner, I'm a director and I'm also the head of uh, administration of the company. I think the best thing about my job is I get a lot of responsibility to do things the way I think they should be done. Uh, every day I get to fabricate something different and interesting. Best thing about my job is helping customers. Customer service is the key to keeping our customers here satisfied. Customer service is important to Dyno Dynamics to keep people coming back to us. Describe Dyno Dynamics in one word, great.